Do you know which countries have released 30 year old whiskies? I mean, it's an easy guess to say Scotland and Ireland were amongst the first, but tonight I have a 30 year old single malt whisky from the fourth country ever to release such an age statement. Hey guys, I'm Nath Martin, the Whiskey Scribe. I'm a whiskey enthusiast and I love all things whiskey, but taste is subjective and there's a lot of different whiskies out there. So whether you consider yourself a connoisseur or you're just looking to explore more about whiskey, let's explore it together. If you want to see more from me, consider subscribing. I put up new videos every week. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like. You can also follow me over on Instagram. Now, from the title of this video, you've probably already worked out that the fourth country to release a 30 year old whiskey was actually New Zealand. Now, I'm not gonna let you know who the third one is until the end of this video, but this three decade old whiskey was originally distilled at the Willowbank Distillery, also known as Wilson's Dunedin Distillery. So Willowbank was first opened in Dunedin by the Baker family in 1969, releasing their first whiskey in 1974. It produced some popular whiskies and was eventually purchased by Seagrams of Canada in 1981. Now at the time, Seagrams was the world's largest distiller, and as a result, the distillery thrived under their ownership. Their single malt was highly regarded for several years. Unfortunately, it was us Aussies who stuffed it up when Willowbank was sold to the Australian brewer Foster's. Now all Foster's did was mothball the distillery in 1997 and send the stills off to Fiji to make rum. Sorry everyone. And by the way, if you're from anywhere other than Australia and you think Foster's is an iconic Australian beer, no. It's hardly even drunk here. We don't have it here in Australia. It's mostly exported overseas and marketed as the Australian beer. We don't like it. Now, the New Zealand whiskey company managed to get a hold of 443 barrels of whiskey from Willowbank Distillery that had been aging away in an old airplane hangar. Now, they've been carefully releasing these whiskies over time whilst they also start distilling in Dunedin. Now, this is the Otago 30 year old. It was distilled in 1987 from barley grown in North Otago and it was bottled at 44.7% in 2017. It has spent 30 years in American oak ex bourbon casks. It was originally barreled in the Willowbank Distillery in North Dunedin. They journeyed down to Tierra Valley to mature for some time before resting the final years with seaside influence in Omaru. Now, I was at a Queensland Malt Whiskey Society tasting a while ago, where we were lucky enough to have Michael and Laura Byers from the distillery presenting their selection, which included this 30 year old gem and they were really kind enough to let me take the remains of the bottle home. So first thing you notice is it's got a real golden straw color. And it almost looks like it's got no legs, but I think they're just very, very slow to start moving. It's not especially thick. There's an interesting nose to it. It's got a very light sort of it's a wood sort of scent, but it doesn't sort of come across as oak really. It comes across a little bit more like cedar. And there's a bit of, there's stone fruits. And there's been some contention about what I define as stone fruits in the past. But what I actually mean this time is real stone fruits, apricot, not rock melon. Because I used to think that was a stone fruit because it had the word rock in it. Yeah, it's just, it's that light little bit of fruit on the nose and mostly the wood. Like, it spent 30 years in wood, it's gonna have a little bit of wood influence, you would think. But on the palate... So you've got some soft, um, I'd call them sort of more earthy spices in there. And there's a little bit of this faint sweetness. It is sort of more, to me it's a little bit more like a light honey. I'm not getting a very fruity... If I'm gonna say fruit, it'd probably be orange, but more of like a marmalade sort of orange flavour. But that's very light, there's not a lot of citrus in here. It's just that sort of sweetness that's coming across. But yeah, the, the earthy spices are quite nice. There's, there's a bit of oak on the palate, but not much. It's marvellously well balanced. And I suppose 30 years, you would think you would have some time to get your shit together. That little bit of oak that's on the palate, that does linger a little bit on the finish. There's a little bit of a creamy texture. Not to the same extent as what you would get from a sherry cask, but it's just this really soft, nice mouthfeel, and it carries a little bit of vanilla off on the finish as well, I think. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting vanilla. Just a faint little bit. Vanilla, oak, earthy spices, teeny bit of stone fruit, but more on the nose. 
maybe a little bit of an orange marmalade sweetness on the palate, but that is a very nice whiskey. And it's pretty fantastic to have been able to try a 30 year old whiskey, especially when the first time I tried a 30 year old whiskey was on my 30th birthday. And I was sort of halfway through my whiskey journey. At that point, I would normally drink whiskey on ice and a friend insisted on buying me a glass of 30 year old whiskey for my birthday. I don't know what she bought me. It was pretty deep into the night, but even in my drunken state, while being at a stage where I would drink whiskey on ice, I had the common sense to think, if I'm gonna drink a 30 year old whiskey, I'm gonna drink it neat. And whatever I drank that night, I really enjoyed. And considering I'm turning 40 this year, and this is the second 30 year old whiskey I've ever had, that's a fantastic way to bookend this decade. So Jess just said that that was probably the fastest tasting I've ever done on camera. And to be honest, as wonderful as this whiskey is, and it's nicely balanced, there's not a lot of flavor notes in here. And that's probably where we can try and clear a few things up when it comes to aged whiskies. Keep in mind, I'm saying this is not a bad whiskey. This is a wonderful whiskey, and I'm glad to have tried a 30 year old whiskey. But 30 year old, 30 years in the cast doesn't just instantly make a whiskey great. More time does not always equal a better whiskey. So if you were to use too young a cask to age a whiskey for this long, you could very easily impart way too much oak character into the whiskey and it'd be completely unpalatable. And by too young a cask, what I mean is a cask that hasn't been used very often. So most single malt whiskey gets aged in ex bourbon casks. So, and the reason for that is single malt whiskey takes too much of the wood flavor from a virgin cask, one that hasn't been used before. So they use ex bourbon casks because a lot of that initial wood flavor has been taken out. Now, an ex bourbon cask that's been used once is fine for a single malt that you're gonna age for four, five, maybe even eight years. But if you're gonna age it longer than that, you've actually gotta have the knowledge and foresight as a distiller to put your whiskey into a barrel that has been used multiple times. So we're talking about a second or a third fill ex bourbon cask because most of those flavor most of the wood flavor characteristics have been absorbed out of the wood into the previous whiskies that have been in there and you've got what they call a spent cask where it's not imparting much flavor at all anymore and that means that you've got time you can put that whiskey in there and it's going to have the time to slowly develop without having to be pulled out before it gets too much of that oak flavor imparted on it. And it's not just choosing the right barrel either. You've still got to have a good whiskey and you still have to age those barrels in a good spot, in a climate where you're not gonna lose a whole lot of whiskey that angels share. And even then it is luck. Sometimes you'll, sometimes that whiskey will turn out good. Sometimes it will turn out bad. So the reason why you don't see a lot of 30 year old whiskies out there on the shelves is because they don't always turn out that good. Quite often the distillers will be checking the barrels over time and at 15, maybe 18, 20 years, they may taste the whiskey, think it tastes fantastic, but worry that any more time in that barrel is going to send it too far in the other direction. And that's where they'll then pull it out and they'll release an 18 year old whiskey or a 20 year old whiskey. 30 years? takes a lot of hard work, bit of a gamble, and to be honest, a bit of luck. They got lucky here. This is a really nice whiskey and quite a bit of common sense and foresight went into it as well. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take that away from them. Somebody had the foresight to say, let's use a spent cask and age this whiskey for longer. And it's lucky they did considering the distillery closed down and it was gonna be stuck in that barrel for a long time anyway. Now, with all that in mind, What's a high age statement whiskey that you've tried that just got it right? Was it a 30 year old whiskey, 40? Has anyone had a 50 year old whiskey that tasted good and didn't just taste unique? Now, to answer my question at the start of this video, the third country to ever release a 30 year old whiskey was actually Japan. So it was Scotland, then Ireland, then Japan, and now New Zealand. Has anyone tried a 30 year old Japanese whiskey? I know I haven't, I've mostly had ones that are I think the 12 year old Hakushu was probably the oldest I've ever had. I'd love to try a 30 year old Japanese whiskey. I just don't think I could afford it. But let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It really does help me out. If you wanna see more from me, consider subscribing. I put up new videos every week. And thanks again to Michael and Lara from the New Zealand Whiskey Collection for leaving this with me. It was really enjoyable. Enjoy what's in your glass and slange.
years of goodness. Thank you.